Hello, and welcome to the next episode of Lost in Criterion. I'm your host, John Patrick Owatari Dorgan, and with me, as always, is a man who once beat three men in a bare-knuckle boxing match with using his only his left toe. Yeah, That's your bless. cue. I, I, and I said my name. The oh, I'm sorry. I yeah, you were really slow. I'm sorry that I'm so slow. I like that still you, almost the... forgot, you almost forgot your own name there. Yeah, I know. Yeah, I was too. I was too psyched to say bear. Baby, I can't. Blah, 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 blah. That's all. You, folks. Thought, you thought of a great uh, joke halfway through saying your name, so you, yeah. You went with bare it. knuckle boxing. I love bare knuckle boxing. The idea, okay. not the actual practice. It's horrible. Yeah, here's here's an interesting thing for you. Um, yeah. The rate. Uh, I read this this week. Um, the You're rate making of, all of this up, aren't you? No, the rate of deaths in boxing increased. Uh, from the bare knuckle era, yeah, I've to heard the, that. To the era yeah, I heard that because, because you were... start punching like crazy. Yeah, because you don't have to worry about breaking it doesn't your hands hurt anymore. So you start punching your, you start punching the parts of the body where normally you wouldn't punch the yeah. skull, the, face, the jaw, yeah. the face. But anyway, that's uh, that's your moment of of history uh, for you. The thing I read this week, which yeah. which should be what this podcast somewhere. really is. Yes, thing I thing... read this week with. The Adam Glass and John Patrick Overtory Dorgan. You were better that time. You remember I'm your having name a lot job. of trouble with my own name. I That's think I'm true. drunk. That's true. <laughs> Maybe. You have had, what, half a beer now? Yes. <laughs> I'm lit. So this week, we are talking about Fishing with John, uh, musician, jazz musician, uh, leader of the, uh, leader or member, member at least, of the uh, of the Lounge Lizards, uh, John Lurie, uh, who also an actor. Uh, he's in a lot of Jer- Jim Jaramusch's work, and Jim Jaramusch is in this. Uh, this is a television series. Um, six episodes originally aired on Bravo in the independent film channel, IFC, uh, back in 1992, uh, two channels that I did not realize existed in 1992. Yeah, me neither. But helped out by the fact that I didn't actually have cable between 1990 and, let's say, 1999. Yesterday. Um, um, well, but here's the thing, is that he... Uh, I had cable, <laughs> I think. Yeah. yeah. But I can't say that Mansfield Cable featured Bravo or IFC in 1992. No, probably not. Probably not. I don't. I don't think uh, they still don't feature IFC, as far as I know. Last time I checked, but I've not made it to Mansfield for a while. So, mm. um, so but we, I are we going with Lurie? Is his pronunciation of his name? Let's Lurie, do that. Lurie, yeah, Lurie sounds great. John Lurie. Yeah. Um, now you've made me want to look it up, though. So. I try, but IMD doesn't. You know, I, or, I, um, yeah. Uh, Wikipedia doesn't feature a uh, pronunciation there's guide for there's English no pronunciation names. Guide. It's true. Those jerks. Um, yeah, there's this really uh, ethnocentric pers- uh, assumption that we should be able to pronounce all English names. Maybe if we go as soon as you put to... a Chinese name up there, we're supposed to be we get a little pronunciation oh. guide. I thought maybe I could I could trick it by going to one of the foreign language pages. <laughs> How'd that work out? <laughs> it doesn't. Uh, mm. And in fact, uh, now you're lost. Yeah, I, I can't make it back. <laughs> <laughs> you're lost on the internet. I'm sorry, Adam. <laughs> Uh, You're adrift on a sea of internet. So, about Fishing with John. Fishing with John. This was really I really, really, fun. really enjoyed this. Um, I was really surprised, too. Yeah. Because when that first episode started, I was like, this kind of sucks. Yeah. The basic premise of this is that John, John Laurie... I think, actually, ultimately, the basic premise is that John Laurie figured out a way for people to pay him to take fishing vacations. Even though he's not a very good fisherman... Uh, as long as he made something while he was there, he could enjoy all of the various places he goes. And, and um, as a sub per, uh, concept, narration could be hilarious. Yeah, yeah. And he was hanging out with his friends. Yeah, um, it's, it's totally, let's get yeah. paid to hang out with our friends. Yeah, let's get paid to hang out with our It's It's like one of those Ocean's 13 movies. <laughs> it's Everybody likes each other, let's just hang out in Italy. <laughs> yeah. And they'll pay us for it because we'll also every every couple of hours 
someone will shoot a scene and we'll do something. Um, but yeah, this is this is a television series. I did not realize it was a television series because I thought, oh, why would Criterion Collection have a television series? Um, but they do, and it's wonderful. Why I'm is this television series only six episodes long? That's the real uh, question. I wish it was still going today. Me too. I would watch this. 22 years later. <laughs> well, I'm just saying, it's it's. there's nothing wrong with it. No, it is really hilarious. Not. It is hilarious. It reminds me, actually, of uh, early episodes. Not even early episodes. This reminds me, and I think I think mainly because of the Jim Jaramouche uh, clear influence on this and, and people of, of his ilk. Uh, I don't mean ilk in the normal negative connotation. Um, but, but the people around him, the people who he influenced and, and influenced him. Um, but it reminds me a lot of early episodes of Space Ghost Coast to Coast. Um, okay, I see what you mean. Where it's just kind of stepped back and, and oftentimes surreal, but not necessarily because of what's actually happening. Um, so this, basically, the bulk of this show is uh, Jim Jeremish. Uh, Jim Jeremish. The, episode, the first episode features Jim Jeremish, and I believe he produced it. Um, but the bulk of this show is John Murray um, fishing poorly. Uh, he's not a great fisherman, but... <laughs> But As like, noted by the fact that every yeah. single fish seems to have been already yeah. caught, except for the shark. I don't think was the and shark. The, the shark is iffy. Even the, then. the shark, there's a good chance they didn't actually catch. But the fish, the fish they b- catch as bait for the shark. I think. No, they I don't think they actually caught, caught. What I think is what everything I've ever seen in any sort of behind the scenes on fishing related shows is. Somebody rigged those to the line, hooked threw the them fish out, and threw and then it in the turned on the camera. <laughs> yeah, Pull them well, back that's in. that's that's one thing. If you've ever if you've ever watched actual legitimate fishing shows, mostly nothing happens, um, right? Because it's fishing. Yeah, and that's you know if you've ever been fishing, mostly nothing happens, and that you know to a certain extent this this is making fun of that in really really bizarrely subtle ways, uh, but at the same time the narration. Uh, by John Webb, um, is so ridiculously over the top, and the editing is is produces just this weird effect of surrealness. You know the shots, the slow mo, the it's it's wonderful and weird and just amazing. And how do you want to talk about this? Do you just want to go episode know. by episode, I or think do you want to just got to do episode by episode? The weird thing is what I'm reading here is I'm actually reading, like, the Wikipedia because now I hadn't actually done my research yet. Okay. And it's really interesting because it seems that probably the reason, and this is my take on what I'm reading, the reason this show did not continue is because Lurie seems to piss off every single person he meets. <laughs> yes, yes. There is there is uh, a story that... A very short story. Apparently, Tom Waits, after his episode, Jim eh, or John claims uh, Tom Waits and he did not talk for two years after, yeah, after yeah. the episode they filmed well, together. Yeah, the, and it, it's you get this really beyond that. Like even like watching the other other episodes, you almost get this. Well, and then Dennis Hopper was so high. On, I don't know. It's high on sugar. Sugar is what, is what he couldn't is concentrate. What, well, Larry, Larry keeps saying that in the episodes too. If you're uh, um, but yeah, it's 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 very interesting. It's, I just it's wonder bizarre. if the reason this didn't continue is because you couldn't get people to do it. <laughs> he ran out of friends. Yeah, right. Like, I'm not saying he's yeah. a bad person or anything. I'm just saying that, like, I don't know. Like, I can see how this would not be. Yeah, yeah. It, it makes really really funny show. <clears throat> yeah, but I can imagine why. It would yeah. be really hard to get people to actually do this. So this this show does one of my favorite things uh, that that you that can be done with a narrative, and it takes something incredibly mundane and then and makes incredibly it incredibly boring narration and makes it intense uh, through well, narration. the music does that too. Brilliantly, and the music yes, and and Lori did all of the music for the show, including that theme song, "Fishing with John." Now, did he do the? The choral version of it, because that's I, I, genius. Yeah, I assume he he also did, but I, I suppose I don't know. Um, well, I just wondered where he got a choral from. Um, yes. Do you want to go episode by episode, or you just want to talk about everything that's awesome? Um, 
let's talk about everything that's awesome. Uh, so but, what else is awesome? Maybe kind of. Let's but let's start. <laughs> let's start. Let's start kind of episodically. I okay. Uh, so let's start with the episode. Is probably the, probably the least impressive the one. one. So, yeah, it's kind of the first one, and it's you. You said the first the first part of it. Um, didn't really pull you in. No, I think it took me a while before I was them, like, this It's is them driving out of New York City. And basically the only dialogue at the beginning is Jim gets into the car and says, do you want me to drive? And John asks him, do you want to drive? And well, they Jim have an argument no. about whether or not he has his license. <laughs> yes, and then they have an argument over whether or not he has a license. <laughs> and, yeah. and he admits that he does not... And... It's funny. That part's funny, but at that point, I was, like, still trying to figure out, is this supposed to be a documentary? Is it supposed to be a comedy? You know what I mean? Like, you sort of, they just sort of drop you into it, and you're like... And at that point, the narration is still really pretty spot on. It's not gotten weird yet. Yeah. And so you're like, I don't know if I'm supposed... Because these jokes don't seem that funny. Yeah. You know what I mean? Because the delivery is not that great, and well, I can't I decide if it's because, you know I me, mean? I can't decide if it's staged or if it's not staged. I think it's not. I think, That's the I think issue. Is but it we're feels a the little best, bit staged. Yeah, we're picking the best bits out of you know driving driving from Manhattan to the tip of Long Island takes more than five minutes. So you know we're right, picking, right, and I understand that. But I mean, like even that joke, that first joke seems yeah feels. A little... Yeah, it feels a little forced, yeah. just the way they're talking is kind of stilted. Yeah. And, you know, maybe it was scripted, but they're both, you know, I, I've never seen Jim Jermish act, but he's a great director, and I, I think he probably understands acting. Um, and, you know, John, John's a good enough actor that I think they, they understand that they sound forced when they're talking like that. So I don't really know, you know. It's it's really relaxed. Well, and, and um, that's just why it took me a little while to get into it. Yeah. Until I started realizing, yes, this is a comedy. Yeah. Yes, it is also a really weird take on things that were happening. In that, like, yeah. as the narration gets more deviated from what's actually going on. Yes. And only seems to be sort of marginally related. To the events of the show, you start realizing, oh, this is somebody recorded something, yeah, yeah. and then decided then, to make it into a comedy. That's really what the first episode feels like, especially with the one of my favorite bits in the first first episode is when they're having lunch and the narrator just out of nowhere says, "I would like a bite of your sandwich." <laughs> yeah, yeah, <laughs> that took me so off guard. I was yes. like, "What? What did yes. the narrator just say?" <laughs> it's completely ridiculous, completely non sequitur, and it's it's. It's delightful, and the narrator really sells this show. The narrator um, is what makes this show funny. Yeah. If it were not for the narrator, it would be like yeah. a really bad MTV show. Yeah, well, there's there's other aspects of the show where where they start playing to the narrator, I think. And, yeah. And specifically the Matt Dillon episode, uh, where they go to visit the taco, the, the uh, oh, I know. shaman, and he tells them to do a dance. And then, and then, to to bless their fishing expedition, and it degrades, to, and and the narrator, you know, we pan up to the to the shore, and the narrator explains that Tacho has turned him, and Tacho has turned himself into a bird, <laughs> into a bird. It's <laughs> so weird. And then suddenly uh, he's on the boat with them. And yeah. it's, it's it's so weird, and obviously that you know that's that's not something that just happened organically. And then they well, those, but here's what I'm. But thinking, then again, okay? it could be. It could. But be. here's it could what be. I think, and this is my really legitimate. Yeah. It, this, in a weird way, reminds me of the weird stuff that high school students make. Yeah. In that you have this footage, and yeah. you need a way to tie it all together. So make up some crazy bullshit story. Yeah, it's so funny maybe to tie maybe it all together. Like one day Tacho was with was them, with them, and, and one, one day, day he Tacho wasn't. wasn't. That's so my guess. Explain, yeah, they had to explain why he suddenly appeared. Right, and so you leave know? it up to crazy narrator man to do it. Yeah, yeah, which works and, great. It's hilarious. It's, it's absolutely hilarious. Um, apparently, apparently, t- I like how in every episode. Or almost every episode, it seems someone suggests using cheese as bait or talks about a time they used cheese <laughs> yeah, as bait. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But the first one is absolutely my favorite. 
with the gun and the cheese? Because it's 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 yeah, it's it's Lori hanging over the side of the boat trying to <laughs> just, entice a shark, a shark up to the out. surface with a piece of cheese. And Jim Jeremus is ready with a handgun. Yeah, and, waiting. and they're like half a foot apart from each other. Yeah, yeah, it's brilliant. <laughs> ah, that was a brilliant. As far I, as things actually happening, that was that was absolutely, yeah. You know, and that one doesn't feel forced at all. Yeah. That's obviously yeah. just some stupid conversation they started yeah, having on the boat. That's the two of them just messing around. And, you know, the the whole what do you eat on a fishing trip? Well, roast beef mostly. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Well, I don't like just, roast beef. Within yeah. beer. Yes, then beer. Uh, the Tom Waits episode, apparently Tom Waits got legitimately angry. Um, but, you, but it's so funny, though. Yeah, yeah, it's, and it's, it's with very the, with funny. The, with the red snapper in the pants? Yeah, yeah. Oh, they, finally, they finally catch a fish. After, Quote, after, unquote. Yeah, which is and obviously it's clearly, not it's alive. It's clearly dead. It's clearly dead. And they're fishing off this rusted-out tugboat that, you know, the rust is the only thing keeping it afloot somehow. Um it wouldn't surprise yeah, yeah, me. Yeah, yeah, the rust has an adhesive dock. system. Yeah. Um, except I guess they do end up driving it around at some point. But um, but they finally catch a red snapper, and they don't have anywhere to put it because it's a tugboat, not a fishing boat. <laughs> yeah, it doesn't have any so, buckets or anything. Yeah, so Tom Waits, Tom Waits suggests that he just store it in his pants uh, because when, when he was younger and was depressed, that would help him. <laughs> yeah. No further explanation. Right, then and then it, later, and then almost John immediately, Murray John catches, catches a fish. And, and it's, it's like, it looks, that, does yeah. that look like the same fish to you? Can't be. That one's in my pants. <laughs> yes, yes. And uh, obviously, it was. You know, the same like, store bought like, fish. Yeah, the same store bought red snapper. <laughs> yeah, I but mean, it's hilarious. This, it's funny. even less happens in this fishing show than normal fishing shows because we don't work up to a point where they're catching a fish. Yeah, there's no we climax. There's there's really no climax ever. Um, you know, half the episodes they don't catch anything. Period. Well, um, they not even never barely catch, fishing. Dylan never catches anything. Willem Dafoe episode never catches anything. The Dennis Hopper episodes I don't think they catch anything. Uh, Tom Waits, they only catch those dead fish, and Jim. Yeah, Jeremish, so really, there's only the one episode where they catch something. Yeah, Jim Jeremish, they catch they catch the feeder fish, the the bait fish that, which I think are probably also staged. Like you said, was probably staged, um, and then uh, they they maybe catch a because they the kind end. of make a reference to it. Like yeah. he says, is it normal to catch four at the same time? <laughs> yes. Yes. And then all you hear is the nonsensical noises that fill in for the people who are not yeah. on the show. Yeah. The, rrr, 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 the sort of like Charlie Brown. Yeah, the Charlie Brown background noises. Noise. Yeah. Um, adult noises. But yeah, yeah, it's 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 uh, it's clearly, oh, yeah, it's absurd. Really oh, and it's making the, it's it's making fun of fishing shows, but it's still trying to be a legitimate fishing show to a certain extent, and that's hilarious to me. See, really and is. I also don't know that it's. It, it is making fun of well, yeah, fishing shows, not, but it's not at the same time. It's it's, it's also not like taking like, the piss out of them, but it's a it's a satire of them. Yeah, and it's almost just a satire of nature documentaries in general because yeah. that narrator sounds oh, spot yeah. on. Yeah, that narrator. Nature narr- great. He must actually have done nature narration, like I'm sure. because it's it's perfect. The the cadence, the tone of voice is all perfect, but then it just delivers. Nonsense, and it's beautiful. Like, uh, what was that? I forget the my favorite one is. Uh, I can't remember now. Oh, uh, what does he say? Um. Oh, uh, they're talking about. Oh, I can't. Uh, I lost it. Shoot, <laughs> it was the f- best thing I've ever heard. Like, uh, oh, um, was like that's my favorite. Oh, uh, what is it? Come on, you can do it. You can I think can't of do it. it. It's gone. No, I'm sorry. <laughs> No, it's drunk. they're they're talking about like I think it's I think it's probably the Matt Dillon episode mm-hmm. where they're talking about like Oh no, it's the it might have been the Costa Rica episode, which is Matt Dillon, where they're talking yeah. about like I can't remember. It's gone. <laughs> the narrator what? starts talking about himself. Oh. Oh yeah. And like says like that's I, I love whatever or something. I can't remember yeah. what it's about anymore, but the narrator's really great. One of my favorite bits in the Matt Dillon episode though, since you mentioned it, um, is, is definitely uh where Matt Dillon suggests that uh uh they didn't do the dance right, they misstepped. Yeah. And 
<clears throat> and that's why they're not catching anything. And John comes back and says, maybe j- maybe you just weren't sincere enough. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Blaming each other for why they're not catching fish. It's very classic fishing. Uh, fishing well, attitudes. <laughs> no, and so the Magdalene episode for me is definitely one of the highlights, okay? Yeah. Because it also features the... the the choral music, okay? Yes. But the choral yes. music goes on during the dance as well. Yes. And they put on subtitles so that you can hear what the choral is talking about, and it's insane. Yeah. Yeah. It's it's delightfully insane. I wish I had written down some of those, actually. But, uh, yeah. It's, uh, it's, it's crazy. Apparently, Matt Dillon wasn't supposed to be in that episode, but the Japanese backers decided he was, uh, he was bankable, more bankable than, uh, John Laurie wanted Flea from the Red Hot Chili Peppers to be in it. Um, but yeah. See, I figure if you're making a show like this, you just take whatever celebrity you happen yeah. to get. Yeah. Yeah. In my mind. You know, I mean, it's just, you just take whatever, <laughs> right? Yeah. I really like the opening of that episode, too, where they're on the plane and they're suggesting that it's an unregistered unre- prop plane and that they're just going to crash. Yeah, and then the uh, the choral keeps singing. We're going fishing, and then these are horses. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. It's no, it's beautiful. <laughs> it's, it's really wonderful. Um, the Tom Waits episode. We'll get back to uh, Tom gets seasick. That was a great little bit. Um, and then they uh, they go back in and they spend their night uh, playing cards with some locals and. And the narrator just says, a game of cards on dry land makes Tom feel much better. <laughs> yeah, yeah. No, it's, for me, it's all narrator, man. It's it just, it is. And, the, it's and then the next morning, he goes, Tom has agreed to fish again. <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah. Oh, man. <laughs> John, drives the boat. John drives the boat, and the narrator says uh, that they could be destroyed instantly. <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> it's, it's, it's all the, all the, yeah, the delivery, it's just, oh, oh man. His delivery is wonderful. Oh, and, and then the shark episode, the narrator talking about, like, oh, no, no, it's the, it's the Matt Dillon episode, where, like, mm-hmm. the narrator talks about how there are sharks at the, where the river, is that the Matt Dillon episode? I think so. I, I, where I the Where the river meets the ocean? Is infested yeah. with sharks, so if they were to fall out of the boat, they would be they would be killed instantly. Yes, <laughs> yes. instantly I think that killed. Is the Matt episode. Yeah, it's hilarious. Yeah, I, I really they're like in a precarious gym- position. If they were to if if they make any mistakes, they could be killed instantly. Yeah, it's beautiful. Well, he does he does the narration almost almost to the uh, to the over uh, pomp and circumstance of like uh, like an old football documentary. Yeah, yeah, yeah. 1972 oh. Pittsburgh. Yeah, right, 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 right. It's not quite that gruff, but yeah. It's... <clears throat> yeah. <laughs> These are real men doing real things. That's in the Willem Dafoe episode, and that's one of my favorite likes, <laughs> too. Oh, man. Uh, uh, there's, so much, there's so much great about this. But that's um, it. We ran into the same... We're running into the same problem that we've had in some of the other ones that are just brilliant. Yeah. Especially if they're comedic. That we're because still, we're just so happy about it. We can't. We talk just about enjoyed it. it so much. Yeah. That we're having the kind of conversation that college dorm mates have after they watch yes. something amazing. Where we'll just name all the things we think were funny. All the things we think were funny, like Jim Jeremush's repeated voiceover. Why am <laughs> yeah. I here? Why am I here? Why am I here? <laughs> and the the Defoe episode where they starve to death. <laughs> yeah, yeah. And then I I just I made a mistake. John is still alive. Mm-hmm. Yes, yes. That's that's in the Dennis Hopper episode. Yeah, because because the Dennis, it's a six episode series, and the William Defoe episode where they go ice fishing in Maine. It's the seventh. Uh, it's the fourth episode, rather. The seventh episode. Six seven. Episodes seven out of six. Um, it's four episodes. It's the fourth episode, and the narration establishes that the only food they brought are cheese crackers that William Defoe uh, brought. And that they run out and they can't catch anything, so they starve to death. On January 19th, Willem and John starve to death, he says. And then the next episode starts with Dennis Hopper, and we're like ten minutes into the episode before John shows up, and the narrator goes, I made a mistake! John is still alive! And it's wonderful. But you mentioned, you mentioned, you know, dorm mates, and you know, the Willem Dafoe episode really, really is like that. Yeah. Because <laughs> yeah. half the episode is Willem Dafoe... And John having uncomfortable conversations about the homoeroticism of camping with a male. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> with the same sex partner. Uh, you know, he's suggesting that they, that they share, uh, share sleeping bags. They're making all of the, yeah, all of the little 
vaguely homophobic jokes that everyone that anybody who goes that um, young people make <laughs> when 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 doing things like going camping and such. Yes, yes. Oh yeah, you know there's there there is a lot great and and it's filmed very well. Um, the cinematographers are 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 themselves really really great people. Um, one of them was. Uh, um, Michael Spiller. Michael well, and Spiller. and that's oh one of the things I found myself when I was watching this thinking is like, man, I really wish this had not been a TV show. And here's why, because I'm watching it and I'm like, oh, there's no such thing as a high definition version of this. There's yeah. you don't really get to see the cinematographer's talents because it's all crappy 1992 television quality. Yeah, yeah, and that makes me sad. Because it's beautiful, but it's also blurry. It's also TV circa 1991, 1992. Yeah. And it was just really sad for me, because I was like, man, this is really pretty, but I wish I could actually see what's going on a little bit. So, that was just oh. my my only downside for it. I just remembered why, why I looked up Michael Spiller as one of the cinematographers. Uh, he was also the cinematographer on... Uh, 27 episodes of The Adventures of Pete and Pete. Really? Yeah. Um, and I was uh, just just the one episode of Fishing with John uh, and is now the director of uh, a whole lot of great shows, actually. He's, he's on right now. But uh, what episode did he direct on Fishing with John? He did the Willem Dafoe episode, which <laughs> which was really great. Um, but he is... Uh, he directed episodes of The Mindy Project, Don't Trust That Bee in Apartment 23, a couple episodes of New Girl, and uh, is a principal director uh, for a lot of episodes of Modern Family, um, which are all great, you know, great comedies around now. He did four episodes of Better Off Ted, which is one of my favorite shows ever. Um, <laughs> as well as Pete and Pete, for that matter. <laughs> yeah. Oh, good old PD. But yeah, yeah. I mean, it's the cinematography is great, and the way it's shot is wonderful, and the way it's narrated is wonderful. And there's there's not a lot we can say about the rest of it except that it's so contrastingly boring that it's wonderful itself. No, it's it's really weird. Like it, one of the quotes that they have from. Um, Right down at the bottom of the IMDP page is, like, you know, some of the reviews and says, you know, there's no big payoff, no big bang payoff at the end of these episodes. That is part of what makes Fishing with John such an appealing alternative to to the high volume, laugh track world of network television. And I gotta admit, that's also kind of what became so nice for me as I was watching was that yeah. it it is just funny because it's funny. Yeah. It's yeah, not it funny really because it. It's not funny because somebody wrote a funny story. Yeah, you know what I mean. Just, and and it, that's nice. I don't know of many. There's not a lot of other shows that are this way, and that I always like them when I find them. So, this is definitely one I'm going to share with as many people who as, as will listen, to me. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, I definitely want to get more people to watch this, and I'll probably end up watching it. I, I was really uh, hoping myself. we would have a guest for this one, because this I, is the kind I'm that... Well, sorry. I, well, no, but it's just the kind that like I wish we had shared with somebody else yeah. in the actual watching and the episode, because it's, I will it's be, wonderful, it's beautiful. I will be sharing this with people. I yeah, me too. Will be. Um, I will share this with my two-and-a-half-year-old son, because he's the only other person I know. You could share it with your wife too. She may or may not find this funny. <laughs> she might it, it, it's absurdist it. enough that it would yeah. probably be funny. It, it, it that kind of humor pretty much breaks the language barrier. There's not a lot of yeah, like dialogue based jokes in this. They're mostly like just here contrast yeah, never... these two completely polar opposite concepts. <laughs> yes, enjoy yes. watching them at the same time. It's it's irony at its heart. Um. <laughs> oh, the watch Dennis a man Hopper not episode. do anything I mean, and listen to the music yeah. be incredibly yeah. intense. Yeah, we we barely talked about the Dennis Hopper episode. I I really do want to mention that because uh, um, we do get the the Laurie is still alive uh, yeah. quote, yeah. which is wonderful. But Dennis Hopper the entire time uh, is eating sugar. 
And Lori, Lori accuses him of just being high on sugar the entire episode. <laughs> and then the uh, in in the second episode, uh, they finally find the squid. And the idea presented in the editing and the narration is that the squid has uh, has hypnotized them, yeah. <laughs> and, and is is causing them to to travel deeper and deeper into Thailand. Uh, Toward their own ultimate demise as self sacrifices, basically, is what I got from it. Yeah. And it's, oh, there's so much ridiculousness about this show, and I love it so much. And it's, you know, it's the same ridiculousness as, you know, I grew up on. And, you know, part, maybe it's part of that. Maybe it's just where I come from. But, you know, like I said, it reminds me of, uh, you know, Space Ghost Coast to Coast. And obviously, now that, you know, not just, there's not just that. Tie with the Michael, Michael Spiller being cinema, a cinematographer on episodes, but it's it's got a lot of the same feel as uh, Pete and Pete in a lot of in a lot of ways. Yeah, um, there's there's that certain that certain epicness to the mundane. And yeah, the, I didn't think about that, but that's true. That 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 that's a there's a very similar take there. That uh, let's make just the most boring thing you can imagine and like score it with intense music yeah, and make yeah. it seem amazing. Turn it up to 11 solely by the way we're shooting and the way we're scoring and the way we're talking about it. But not necessarily by the way it's actually happening. Yeah. yeah. So I'm actually looking at an article right now and um, mm-hmm. it is the way I, I think we both thought it is where they just took hundreds of hours of footage yeah, and then tried to make a story, and that's where our narrator comes in to make it comprehensible. Yeah. Um, but um, it did remind me; the same article reminded me of one of my favorite scenes where they start talking about driftwood art. Oh, yes, and and how both of them think they would probably him and uh, Tom Waits. Tom Waits that start talking about how they would both probably make driftwood art, but they don't actually like driftwood art. They just think they would probably make it. Yes. I think that's a great conversation. Yes. Neither of them like it, but they know that if they lived there, they'd end up, they'd end up doing it. 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 It's kind of a, it's one of the more weirdly poignant things about yeah. the, because it kind of touches into the thing that like, yeah, I kind of feel the same way. I feel like yeah. everybody who's around Driftwood ends up making Driftwood art, yeah. but nobody well, actually likes Driftwood art. That's one. That's one thing... It's kind of a commentary on the people who won't like this show. Um, you know, it's it's a very personal thing, in a way, because you're making art out of your own vacation. Right, right. But yeah, that makes but, sense. Yeah, but they but they at the same time they end up they, they end up making something I very much enjoy. Yes, out of, out of their driftwood, um, but but not out of their uh, not out of the physical driftwood. No one likes driftwood art. <laughs> yeah, exactly. But yeah, no, I've I've had people show me their driftwood art. They've come back from vacation with all these sand and shells and put it together. And no, it's awful. I have to pretend to be interested for a little bit. Hooray! But I'm sure you'd do it too if you lived in Jamaica. Oh yeah, you know if I if I ever traveled to a beach, I'm sure I would do the same thing. Yeah, thank goodness you and I are as far away from beaches at all times as humanly <coughs> possible. I know, right? It's for the best of our... The best... No beaches in Ohio. I'm surrounded by ocean, and I'm still as far away from the beach as I can possibly be at any time. Well, I should clarify. There are beaches in Ohio. Uh, There's none that you would want to swim on. And no one... It doesn't catch fire anymore. (laughs) The lake never caught fire. The river's the lake. The river did. Yes, that's true. You are correct. Yeah. Yeah, let's let's be fair. (laughs) Let's, Let's be completely... Historically accurate. Just yeah. the river. Just the river caught fire. <laughs> oh. But you know, I think ultimately maybe part of this is that I'm just jealous that this got made. Because, you know, it's so much, it's so much like, you said it's like a, like high schoolers just recording it, it themselves. It is. It is exactly and, like that. If you yeah, take and it's, what any high school video production is, at least what you yeah. and I and our friends did. Yeah. Let's record this footage and slap it together somehow yeah you know and and it's like setting up a tape recorder uh and always having it on just for those five minutes of of absolute cleverness that you're going to eventually have 
but you have to you have to work through all. Yeah, of you have the, to record uh, days of six, material to get it. Yes, days days of downtime. Yeah, well, but, yeah. yeah, I just but I this is one of those ones where I think we don't want to talk about it too much more because we've already said what needs to be said, which is it's great. I love it. Yeah, go watch it. Yeah, it's brilliant. It's one of the best things we've watched. Certainly one of the funniest. So, do you want to just end there? It's true. Yeah, yeah. Let's go ahead. This will yeah, be a we short should. Episode. We should get in better practice at ending when we're done. I know, right? Instead yeah. of just talking, you want to talk about monkeys again? No, let's not talk about monkeys. Okay. We talked enough about monkeys last week. Though we have we have time. We have time. We could we could you know you were talking about uh, primatology. Well, I was just it, and why I, macaques I are monkeys that. despite not having tails. Well, no, they're Ooh. they're like some species of old world monkeys. They don't have tails, but uh-huh. that's usually a sign of being an ape. But yeah. they're not. They're monkeys. Okay. 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 It's not so found what? in New World apes though. Or is there is monkeys, there a reason sorry. for that? Do they have like a? I don't know. Don't ask me. I didn't pay well, thanks, that Pat. close attention in primatology class. That was super informative. It, it, it is. It, it's no, one it, of the it, well. It's one of the ways you can spot it, an ape. Is okay. it has a, it, if it doesn't have a tail, it's probably an ape, but it could be an old war monkey. Okay. But some okay. macaques have tails, but not Japanese macaques. They don't have tails. Oh, okay. So, so the fact that they they are part of a species that does have tails makes them makes them an ape, or makes them a, a monkey, not an ape. Well, um, and, and yeah, it's just a. You you evolve tail slash not tail based on the situation, I suppose. Yeah. Or God has a sense of humor. They do have funny butts. Yes. Well, they they didn't too much. These monkeys. Oh. Their butts were not that intense. I did see okay. a skeleton of one. That was kind of cool. Its oh, name ooh. was June, I think. They named the skeleton June. No, was that the, the monkey's, the, name, the before monkey's the name before it was the skeleton it was named June. <laughs> um, right. It was pretty interesting though. It was really kind of a fun thing. I was a little bit impressed that it was as um, not as showmanship y as I thought it would be. Most of the time, okay. when I go to places like this in Japan, they get their their like tourist traps. But this wasn't too bad that way. So I was kind of impressed. That's a, that's all for monkey talk. Thank you. Hooray, monkey talk. <laughs> All right. Next week, we'll be talking about that great children's literature classic, Lord of the Flies, adapted in oh. 1966. Uh, about 10 years after it was written, I think. Uh, 1963, actually, it was adapted. It was released in 66, I, for some reason. I think that's true. Um, but at the same time, no, it was filmed in 61 and released in 63. That's where I'm I don't up. know. I know you don't know, but I actually read things. <laughs> I don't know how to read. We'll be talking about that. Directed by Peter Brook. Um, yeah, 1963. Heimer? Released, no, wait, no, no, just Peter Brook. Released 1963, Lord of the Flies, based on the Willem Golding book, which pretty much everyone in America read during high school. Uh, <laughs> well, everyone was detriment. supposed to read. Well, yeah. I mean, we'll, we'll get Let's into, we'll get into clip notes and spark notes, I'm sure. So, study up. Uh, yeah, prepare yourself. Of, prepare yourself. There's plenty There'll of be websites a test at the that'll, end. that'll do. There will be a test after every chapter. And enjoy your <laughs> enjoy your week. We'll talk to you next time. Yeah, Thanks. next time. See ya.
been listening to Lost in Criterion, a production of With Two Brains. The show is hosted by Adam Glass and John Patrick Oatari Dorgan. Jonathan Hape did the music, and Adam Glass also edited it all together. Feel free to contact us by email via lostincriterion at withtwobrains.com or join us on the web at www.lostincriterion.com.